The 2023 NASCAR season is almost over, and while we have those who are competing for championships, those who are elite every year, and those who we expect to be running up front even if they had bad years in 2022, there are some who have emerged as either contenders or people who have got their stock up over this last season. And I want to kind of highlight a few of those today to see the unlikely heroes of 2023, the ones who have really ascended this season. First, we'll start in the truck series with Bailey Curry. Curry has only made 10 starts so far this season and is now signed on full-time for 2024. He's been competing for Nice part-time in the 41 truck and has three top fives already. And he competed for wins or at least was competing up front with whoever was going for the win at Nashville and Homestead. And it looks like he's been getting better and better as the seasons went on. He's been up front in many races, even if the finish isn't there. And with a full-time schedule next year, he could be a true playoff caliber driver. Plus, he's only 27 years old, so it's not like he is really old and this is his last shot. He has plenty of upside. And this is probably his first real shot in NASCAR. Second up, we'll stay in the trucks with William Swalich. He has six starts so far in 2023, but here's the thing for me that is really interesting about him. He's only 17 years old. With that youth, he has plenty of upside. And with three top 10 in those six starts so far, he has been a driver who I think a lot of people have caught wind of and have noticed. And he's been up front in more than just those three races. In my opinion, he looked to have top five speed and at least be a top 10 truck at Milwaukee before having problems problems, and I think he really deserves a true shot moving forward. He isn't going to be able to go full-time really until 2025 more than likely, but it is looking like he's going to be a rising star, and this is only the beginning. Now, moving up to the Xfinity series, we have Parker Kligerman. In my opinion, this is Parker's best season ever in any of NASCAR's top three series. Parker's been a bit of a journeyman. He had a bit of a pop-up here and there in trucks. He had different times where he was pretty good or at least decent in the Xfinity series. And he has always had sort of the mid to back of the pack rides when he was up in the Cup series. But this season so far in Xfinity has been a breakout one in my opinion. Eight top fives, 17 top tens, a 13.2 average finish. And he's even in the playoffs this year, at least was. He's exceeded all expectations of what his car could do and has probably exceeded a lot of their expectations as well. And he's nearly doubled his amount of Xfinity career top 10s and has more than half of his top fives in his career in this season alone. And he's even outperforming how he ran with KBM equipment in the NASCAR Xfinity series in the early 2010s. Into his 30s, he is an improved driver and now has a team around him that will build up around him and probably push him forward. So for me, Parker Quigger future is looking brighter than ever. Now on a part-time basis in the Xfinity series is Ryan Turex, another that has really had a resurgence in his career. Many have noticed that Ryan has been performing better and better, and every chance he gets in a good ride, he's usually up in the top five or at least the top 10. He got a second place finish at Phoenix earlier this year that was pretty good, and he scored a perfect 150 driver rating at Dover and won after leading 124 of 200 laps. In many ways, people are drawing parallels between he and his brother, Martin Truex Jr. Ryan's only 31 years old, so he has a bright future. He just needs a sponsorship, but with JGR equipment, Ryan looks like he could be a contender week in and week out, and if he were able to get a top-level ride full-time in the Xfinity Series, I personally think he would be able to be a championship contender and maybe follow his brother's footsteps in being a successful cup driver one day. Now, with a mix of Xfinity and Cup races that he's jumped into either as a part-time basis or as a sub, we have Carson Hosevar. We've all seen what Carson can do in the truck series. While he can be erratic at times, he is a very talented driver, and many are seeing him as what he is, possible future star. He excelled in his limited Xfinity races. The one that I think a lot of us remember is his race in the 77 car, where he got a top 10 at Charlotte, but he was running some of the fastest laps on track, even against guys in JRM and Gibbs equipment. 
he really, I think, opened a lot of people's eyes with that. And he also has another top 10 on top of that. He really has outrun his equipment for the most part when his Xfinity starts. And we haven't even started talking about his cup experience. He has jumped up into the cup series and consistently ran between 10th and 15th. While he doesn't currently have a top 10 yet in the cup series, he should have one. He has run incredibly well in that legacy number 42 and has outran Noah Gregson, who was somebody who was a hot prospect at the start of this season in the same equipment. The one that really caught my eye for him was Gateway and Bristol. At Gateway, he ran the seven car while Corey LaJoy was filling in for Chase Elliott, and he was up into the top 15 before his brake rotor exploded. And at Bristol, if it wasn't for having a flat tire and other issues, he easily would have had a top 10 as he had top five speed in the Bristol night race this year. He has completely earned the number 77 ride in the Cup Series that he's going to have next year, and he gives many high hopes for both his career as well as Spire as a whole. Now, last but not least, we have Josh Berry, who this year has kind of been nicknamed the Super Sub. Barry is somebody who has really done the best to take advantage of all of his opportunities. We saw it in the Xfinity series, which led to him getting a full-time ride with JRM after Dale Jr. really helped ascend his career. And now we're seeing the same thing in the Cup series. His super sub role was with both HMS and Legacy, driving the 9, 42, and 48 cars this year. He had an initial top 10 at Phoenix in the 9 car, which was pretty good. Many said that's where the car should be. And he ran well enough. He also had a top 10 at Dover in the 48. Pretty good for the most part as that team may have been led a little astray after their driver was injured. But the second place finish he had at Richmond in the nine car is a shining example of him being a great super sub. Now, he had good strategy. He was running between 9th and 14th for most of the afternoon, but when that strategy was used, he was able to hold off the pack and stay up there. And I think that gave a great flash of what he could be in the Cup Series. And we'll find out if that flash is more of a reality next year, as he is the one tapped to replace Kevin Harvick in the number four car in 2024. But with that, I want to pass this all on to you and ask what drivers caught your eye this year? Yeah, there's a lot I could have talked about, but I wanted to talk about ones who have struggled or had a little problem moving up rather than those like, say, an SVG who comes over and, yeah, wins, but at the same time, this is his first NASCAR deal, or drivers who have shown flashes in the past and have great cup rides. So let me know who caught your eye this year that was completely off your radar coming into 2023. Let me know down in the comments below. And while you're at it, leave a like on this video, share this video, and subscribe to this channel for more great NASCAR content. Thank you so much to all my channel members for your continued support. And until next time, have a good one.